from Abuja. Hello, thank you for being a part of our show. We appreciate you. I'm Magnus Paco, and this is Magnus Paco GVA. As always, it's all about how we can raise the level of living. That's what it's all about. In view today, our continuation of how to market Africa in a more competitive world. As we said last time, in the recent global competitiveness ranking of the World Economic Forum, of the bottom 37 countries, a whopping 27 are African. And to top that, no African country ranks among the top 44 countries in the world in global competitiveness. And so we continue with Malam Farouk Mohammed, chairman of the Abuja Broadcasting Corporation to help us on how to market Africa, even with conditions like this. But before that, in our hidden economics, how to get foreign companies to marry our own. Then continue with us as we introduce a new segment we call Competitiveness Review. This is where we meet Nigerian personalities and companies that are globally competitive and among the best in the world. Charcoal Grill Restaurant in Abuja is our pick of the week. Don't miss our review of Charcoal Grill Restaurant. Now up next in our quick view, we look at the top players in ICT and how African cities stock up for international investments. That's coming right up. Technology has proven over time to be a very valuable tool in enhancing economic performance by increasing productivity, access to information, and also for creating jobs and ultimately improving the welfare of individuals. Foreign direct investment fosters the advancement of an economy through innovation and technological transfers by improving efficiency and competitiveness in the country. At the heart of all these are individuals that are well-known global pioneers that have worked to literally transform our way of living. As a result, most communities are constantly jockeying to position themselves as good destinations for investment. In this connection, who among the following is one of the founders of Google? Jeff Bezos, Jack Dorsey, Jan Kuhn, and Sergey Brin. Which of these places is rated the highest among the so-called African cities of opportunity? for international investment. Cairo, Egypt. Casablanca, Morocco. Johannesburg, South Africa. And Tunis, in Tunisia. Still in view, Malam Farouk on how to market Africa. But before that, we show you the globally competitive charcoal grill. Now up next, how to get foreign companies to marry your own.
the beautiful and lovely West African songwriters, performers, and world-class stars. Miss V of Ghana and Yemi Alade of Nigeria in Come and See My Mother. Well, as they say it, a woman of quality knows what she wants. She will not allow herself to be devalued. As they say in their hit song, if you want to marry me and do what you want, then hurry, come, carry your baby go. But first, come and see my mother. You must see my mother. Now guys, why do young ladies want you to come and see their mother? Well, this is why. They don't want you in any illicit or even illegal trade with them that may not lead to any real investment. In fact, that may devalue them. Now, look around the world. Countries that are best of friends and have overlapping demand in goods and services have two-way trade and investment. The days of just trading alone are gone. Indeed, the days of big power countries just coming to do international contracts in developing countries should also soon be gone. What we need is trade and investment, and mostly investment. With open trade and investment, no one is likely to play games or use the other person. When you are an investor, you are a long-term stakeholder, and what hurts one party hurts everyone. When you go to see her mother in Ghana or Nigeria or anywhere, you come with all your parents, all your proxies as guarantors and with your credentials to sign on the dotted line. Then trade and investment will take place and you may handle the merchandise for personal and mutual benefits. The cost to society also declines as social gains rise when you genuinely want to invest. In that case, if you are not playing games for quick gain or temporary firm, come with all your people and guarantors to see her mother. Any cost-benefit analysis in this will favor both of you. That's what is involved in fair trade and investment. Our hidden economics for you. Maradona, local official, every day na so so si si yo, every day na different specio. Say you love me, talk your own. Anything I want, you got it. I'm the one you really want. All the others photocopy, make it official. If you really need na, make you follow me. All the way to Nigeria. We are pleased to introduce a new innovative and exciting segment on our show. We call it Competitiveness Review. Our review is aimed to promote economic competitiveness in Nigeria and Africa by showcasing organizations and personalities that compare competitively with the best in America, Europe, and the rest of the developed world. To be globally competitive, an organization or personality will have stand-out competencies, innovative high-quality approaches in culture, style, sophistication, and global appeal, and then add efficiency and high productivity. All these converging to provide a good and memorable experience for customers, stakeholders, and associates. Nigeria and Africa need personalities and organizations that are globally competitive. This is what will help raise the level of living and make us great. And so, in our mating edition, we present Charcoal Grill in Abuja 
as our globally competitive organization of the week in the restaurant business. In our view, Charcoal Grill is one of the best restaurants in the world in its class. Located in the heart of Wuse in Abuja, Charcoal Grill has virtually all the attributes for fine dining, sophistication, and global appeal. The restaurant, owned by a female entrepreneur, ranks high on our scale in the memorable experience it provides. Serving both African and continental fresh and tasted dishes, we consider it to be ready for the 21st century customer. With our coffee lounge and free internet, we find it to be fantastic, clean, beautiful, international, phenomenal charcoal grill, globally competitive. If you're doing some wonderful things and you want to be considered for our competitiveness review segment, contact us using our information displayed on the screen. For more, go to www.magnuspacklegva.com. Before we start our discussion, here are our quick view answers. Sergey Brin is one of the two founders of Google, the other being Larry Page. Cairo, Egypt tops the list among Africa's cities of opportunity for international investment. For Nigerians that are wondering, Lagos, with its strong financial industry, comes in at number 8, ahead of Addis Ababa and Kampala. When Lagos gets this act completely together, it will most certainly rank well above the best of them in Africa. For comments, adverse and sponsorship, please see our information displayed on the screen. Today we continue with Malam Farouk Mohammed, MNI, on how to market Africa. Malam Farouk is chairman of Abuja Broadcasting Corporation. He was previously editor of Daily Times and executive director of DTM PLC before serving as head, PR and information and spokesman at the OPEC Secretariat in Vienna, Austria. After which he served as corporate secretary and member of senior management at the OPEC Fund for International Development. Please join us in our continued discussion with Madam Farouk Mohammed. So what can we, how do we market? You, you are a very experienced person. You've been all around the world, served in very high uh, places. Um, both in Nigeria and overseas, what, as you see, as you see our competition out there, what can we, how do we, how, not what can we, how do we market ourselves? Okay, you know, prop, before, how, how do we posture, how do we be, begin to sell what uh, we, the little that we have, okay. or whatever we have now? The, okay, the way I see it, uh, basically, prop, is that before you market anything, yes. You have to have it in the yeah. first place, and then it has to be reasonably good. Yeah. Because if you have a bad product, I mean, who is going to buy Nobody it? Who will listen it. to you? Yeah. So we have to put our houses in order. Yeah. We have to have continue to have this purposeful leadership, and then we have to give opportunity to whoever, the youth. And it's not a question of just empowering them to get jobs or something. Inventiveness. Yeah. Nigeria is about the only country with the wonderful blessings we've heard from the Almighty God and, and, and the wonderful potentials that we have mm -hmm. that does not have a viable, solid machine tool industry mm -hmm. base. Mm -hmm. I don't know of any country in the world, China, India, Malaysia, some of Korea that were looking up to Nigeria yeah. some few decades back, but that have zoomed ahead of us, yeah. we're important. So, so when them. you say machine tool base, just as for the sake of understanding, what, what, what are you really referring machine to? Machine tool base, yeah. machine tools are machines to make machines. Okay. So all we do basically is that we Im import engine blocks mm. and we assemble. Mm. 
we've had this uh, assembly, auto assembly plants now for how many years? A couple you, of no, years. But we normally, as you said, we normally, that that's what they call capital goods. Yeah. We usually import them. Right. You, you're saying we should produce them? Well, we should start producing some. So the people, you see my concern, Prof, is that I am very, very concerned about uh, when I go home in Kano, mm -hmm. on the streets, you see, when I look at these guys, you know, I mean, they are just from industry, mm -hmm. in their hundreds and hundreds and thousands. And I say to myself, and then I reflect, I say, we have to avoid the situation, the situation of the revolution of rising expectations. Mm -hmm. Because you get to a stage revolution of rising, of rising expectations, expectations because the populace is okay. expecting this and that. And then the more frustrated they are, later I say, well, I'm, I'm not mm -hmm. advocating that. Yeah, I'm just saying we yeah, should address yeah. some of these issues. So, Prof, we cannot be competitive until we get our own house in order. It's Stuff. another problem we have. Is it, is, it, is it too much uncertainty? Because Africa is characterized by a lot of conflict. It's been a thing that we've had in Somalia, in Sudan, in Congo, in Nigeria, right. <laughs> you know, Liberia recently, Sierra Leone right. at some point. So the, it's, is that a problem? If, if you want to come it's to part Nigeria of the now, problem. And, then, and you hear, that, oh, Nigeria, there's a Fulani herdsman, the exactly. Boko Haram, would right. you come? Even though, no, I mean, you can't blame them, but yeah. you see, I'll tell you one thing quickly, Prof. Yeah. Our media should do a heck of a lot more. Okay. Pub, private media, public media, you see, they have to channel their energy. We want to develop this. I'm not talking about psychophants here. Yeah. I can never be a psychophant, yeah. but they can still do their job, jobs in the, professionally in the best interest of this country. Okay. Take, I mean, we've all lived outside. Yeah. I had friends in the CNN, colleagues when I was at OPEC. Yeah. We, we, prof, you could see that their respective various media, their governments don't tell them, go and do it, but believe me, by yeah. and large, yes. from my own interpret, maybe I'm wrong, mm. they seem to be an extension of their respective countries' foreign policy. Take tourism. So, so, Nigeria maybe, so maybe they should balance it a bit more, because, because in many cases, they, we do have this problem. We do have right. the Fulani Hertzman problem. Yeah, we yes, do yes. have the Boko Haram problem. Correct. But what you're saying maybe they are not balancing it with other good things that are happening? No, no. What I'm saying is that they should report what is happening. Exactly. Okay. They should report what is happening. Yeah. Nigeria is the largest economy in Africa. Correct. Yeah. Followed by South Africa. Correct. Yeah. And shouldn't that amount to something? It definitely In terms should. of having something to sell it, to the it, world it, outside of crude oil. It, it definitely All should. All this, it nearly definitely 200 should. million people now, well over 180 million I mean, people. Even our Shouldn't we have something that we can oh, sell we do to have, the world? Oh, we do have. We do have lots of things that the world yeah. would appreciate, you know? Yeah. Our, our culture, our, our cultural way, ways of... I, I don't know of anywhere in the world yeah. where you uh, have horsemanship, mm. the Darba, mm. that you have up north. I yes. don't know of anywhere yes. in the world. Where, you know, when they do the Jahi, the Daba. Yes. And then the same thing when you go to Southwest. Yes. Go to Lagos, the AO Festival. These are unique things. Go to South South. Go to South. The, like you the have the Atilogu. Uh, everywhere. The uh, uh, Carnival. Exactly. Yeah. The Carnival. Yeah. So yeah. we have things. Even the so State picking it up. We now. have things. So we, so uh, but, the problem, up, yes. but the problem is that you, you said it earlier, yeah. Prof. You know, uh, people are scared. Because they say, oh, they hear only negative things about mm. Nigeria. I say, oh, Nigeria, if you go this and that, blah, blah. So they get, but, and then you need those funds. You know, very quickly. So, so you're saying tourism could be something to oh, market it to could the way be, is what it, you're trying it, to say, it right? It could be yeah. a very, 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 put, it could be a very credible on our foreign exchange. I'll give you a quick example. When yeah. I was in Vienna for three consecutive years in the 90s, yes. when I was with OPEC, yes. Austria and the statistics were there. Yeah. Austria earned three times annually what from tourism, mm. what Nigeria was earning from the sale of crude oil. Wow. Oh yeah, Th three consecutive years. Wow. You know, so they, they earned three times. So prof tourism could be it. But it's not only tourism. Look, we have solid minerals. We have so many other things. Why? But that's why we have the Ministry of Culture and Tourism the Ministry of uh, Mines and Steel or yeah, Solid Mineral Yeah, yeah, but you see, Prof, so, if you have Ministry of Culture and Tourism, yeah. just that by itself will not be able to do it because 
there are other factors. People like, will look like at what? the environment, you know? Okay. Like you said, yeah. oh, I want to grow, I want to visit the Obuduran, the Yankari Games Reserve. Yeah. But hey, uh, maybe yeah. the, these terrible guys will yeah. be looking. So, so many other things. Well, I, I, Power. Think, I, I think that we are not marketing, I personally Power. think that we're not marketing ourselves well. Well, we're, we're not marketing what with the positive the, things the, the that, we, that have, we have. I, agree. I, I think that we should, right. we should take more concerted actions at least start from, somewhere even from the community level of course yes to state level to federal level but are the communities involved but but we should are they involved yeah. the well, local obviously, communities obviously they are not yeah, but, you but see, we should. You and that's why we're having this discussion exactly you to have sensitize to involve, people to things that can be done you have to involve the communities yeah. because any part of this country yeah. you go you'll have you'll find something almost unique mm. Alan Farouk, you, I want to thank you so very much. You, you are wonderful. Much. We well, appreciate you. And Prof, we, we would like to see you again very soon. Prof, you are more wonderful. Oh, so thank, I thank appreciate you so Thank you. Thank you so much. Fantastic. So Keep it up. As we discussed last time, African nations are still lacking in significant accumulation of capital, which can increase output and therefore economic growth and increase competitiveness. Unfortunately, and because of this serious deficit in capital accumulation and technological advancement, Africa continues to lag behind in global competitiveness. Today, there are probably millions of Nigerians in Europe and well near 500,000 in the United States alone. What is more important is that many of these people can market Nigeria and Africa effectively. Fortunately, many of the Western stereotypes associating Africa with death, disease, war, and poverty are being canceled by the emergence of an affluent African consumer that is connected with the rest of the world and with a smartphone always in hand. This shift in perception in the West must be engaged by African governments and mostly through the African diaspora. And by the African diaspora, I mean the wider, deeper, and historic African populations that have lived in the West and especially in America for centuries. Many African Americans want to help market Africa engage them, invite them home to Africa and work with them. These are our best ambassadors. And then never forget the help and support that have come from the likes of Bill and Melinda Gates and many more. Africa is ready for trade and investment. Even President Donald Trump has indicated readiness for an Africa that is open for business. Let us show that we have started. I'm Magnus Paco, and that's my view. Thank you.